Good morning and welcome to another edition of 100 Days of Devotion. This morning, just before we get into the Word of God, please pray with me for a minute. Dear Father, thank you for this new day that you have made. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to us. Thank you because we know beyond any doubt that we are your children by reason of of the Holy Spirit that bears witness in our hearts and testifies on our behalf that we are sons and daughters of God. Thank you, Lord, because you have given us new life. Thank you because you have transformed us, dear Father. Lord, this morning, according to your word, your mercies and your steadfast love are new. And therefore, Lord, we receive new mercies and we receive your love to us this morning. Dear Father, thank you because as it is the day that you have made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for a spirit of rejoicing upon us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This morning, I'd like to speak about the topic, Born Again. Now, many of you must have heard about this topic. You must have heard that expression before. It's a topic I love to speak about because it is the most superior miracle of all time. It is everything to God and therefore has become everything to me. What does it mean to be born again? How do you get born again? Are you born again? Can you stop being born again? Now, I remember when I was doing my advanced Bible training course, I decided to write my project on the topic, the born again experience. And I remember that when I did the research, because it was a research paper, and when I was doing my research, I spoke to several people, hundreds of people actually, and we conducted a survey on these people and we heard all kinds of things. Some people thought being born again meant to have a Christian name. Some people thought being born again meant to be baptized. So somebody would say, oh, I was baptized when I was four years old, when I was a newborn baby. I was Christianized. You know, there were several connotations or several beliefs as to what it means to be born again. Somebody said to be born again means to do good. People said all kinds of things. And quite interesting, many of these things were, you know, shocking. And so this morning, I'd like us to start by answering the question, what exactly does it mean to be born again? And are you born again? Now, as you listen to this, I'd like for you to do a self-check. Are you born again? Do you think of the expression born again as a group of people who pray and shout when they pray, who are very charismatic in their expression of faith to God? Is that your belief? Then there's a fundamental problem. And I'd like for us to just dissolve those doubts this morning as we read through the scriptures. My goal this morning is to bring you strong evidence as to what it means to be born again and to let you know that you must be born again. Turn your Bibles very quickly with me to the very first place where this expression was mentioned, John chapter 3 and verse 3. Now, for backstory, this was the time when Nicodemus, an elder, a scholar, he came to Jesus by night, of course, not wanting to be caught, you know, discussing with this very new and controversial preacher and being an elder at their time in the faith. He decided to show up in the night. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot experience the dominion of God. He cannot experience God in his fullness, in his authority. That is the verse that we are going to focus on in today's conversation. Now, when you read the entire chapter, and I recommend very strongly that you read the entire chapter, John chapter 3. When you read that chapter, the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus was quite an interesting one. The Bible says Nicodemus would ask Jesus, are you saying I should go back and get into my mother's womb? Jesus said, no. And then Jesus went ahead to say, unless a man is born of water and the spirit to be born again. 
You see, so Jesus was not referring to any kind of physical experience because then Jesus said, born of water and the spirit. So it wasn't any kind of physical experience. It wasn't about you going into your mother's womb. If that's what you're thinking, whenever we ask you if you're born again, then Jesus already answered that for you in the scriptures. If you believe that Jesus existed or if you believe in Jesus as the Lord of our salvation, then you already know you have your answer. Now, the expression born again, as used in that portion of scripture in John chapter 3 and verse 3, are the Greek words genau anothen. And genau anothen mean begotten from above. So Jesus was saying, unless you are begotten from above, unless you are born of God, to be born again means to be born of God. Let us read 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. The Bible says, now this was Peter writing to believers. He said, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. Now remember, in John chapter 3, Jesus went ahead and said, unless a man is born of water and the spirit. And when you read through scriptures, you would see several references where they describe the word as water. So Jesus was really saying, unless a man is born of the word and the spirit. And now in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23, he's explaining what that word is. He's saying that we are born not of perishable seed. Now the word seed there is the same word for semen. We are not born of perishable semen. So he says when you're born naturally, you're born of perishable seed. You're born a sinner. Spiritually speaking, the Adamic curse or the fall of man is imputed on you and the effects of the fall of man are imputed on you. But in this portion, he's saying, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. It means the word of God can be likened to a kind of semen. It is the thing that produces. For example, for Jesus to be born, he wasn't born by the semen of Joseph. Jesus was born by the word. How would this be? Mary asked. The spirit of God shall come over you. Now, the spirit there is a kind of womb or incubator. The spirit of God shall envelop you or incubate you. So the word was spoken to Mary and the spirit incubated her for Jesus to be produced. Now, that is really a very spiritual experience. In other words, the word is spoken, the spirit incubates, and then you're born. I'm trying to describe the experience, you know, I'm trying to give you a picture of what really happens when we are born again. To be born again means to be begotten of God. Now, being born again is such a very deep reality. Because when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, now, if you've been following our devotions, I explained to you that the word Christ actually means the anointed one and the anointing. So, Christ there is the Spirit. If anyone is in the Spirit, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now, new creation there is the kind of being that has never existed before. So, when you get born again, when you're begotten of the Father, through the word and the spirit. So you see, the entire trinity is involved in new birth. The father will speak the word or release the word and the spirit envelops. Now let me show you it very practically in scripture. So the father sent Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So he sent us his word. And then... We could not be born again. So he lived with them. He demonstrated the life that they were to leave to them. He demonstrated a new kind of life to them. Then on Pentecost day, when the spirit came, the spirit enveloped them. It was the spirit that made new birth possible. In other words, the Holy Spirit was that which was necessary or the person necessary to cause new birth was the womb of our new birth. Are you born again? Are you begotten of the Father by the Word and the Spirit? Have you received eternal life 
The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, everlasting life there doesn't just mean you stay alive forever. It means the God kind of life. It means you will receive new life. Now, to be born again doesn't mean to give your life to the Lord. Let me correct that. To be born again really means to be begotten of the Father by receiving his life. So what happens is the word is spoken and the word of God is life. Jesus said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So the word of life is spoken or released. Now you receive the word that is spoken and you are incubated and the Holy Spirit brings you, incubates you and brings you to birth. Now, all of this sounds like a very long process, but it happens by faith and it can happen in a matter of seconds. Because all that it takes to get born again is that you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. That's what it takes to get born again. How do you get born again? How do you receive the life of God? Right? Now, you receive the life of God According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So, to be born again means to be saved of God, to receive new life. What have you been saved from? You have been saved from eternal damnation, eternal destruction. You have been saved from death. Because when Adam sinned, the Bible says when one man sinned, all sinned. That's why you're born a sinner. But you see, in Christ, you see, because the word was released, Christ represented the word and the spirit. So in Christ, which is really the word and the spirit in one, in Christ, if you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. That's the truth about it. So when you're born naturally, you're born a sinner. You're born after the seed of Adam, the semen of Adam. You're born after the nature of Adam. But to be born again means to confess the Lordship of Jesus. Now, two things happen there. The first part of it is you confess the Lordship of Jesus. In other words, when I confess that Jesus is Lord over me. So it is not just that I believe that Jesus came, he lived, you know. I don't believe in that as a story or as a fable. I believe that the work that he did was for me. It means my heart accepts that everything that Jesus did was for me. So the question is, when you hear the story of Jesus, that he came, that he lived on earth, do you believe that it was for you? That when he died on the cross, he paid the price for your sins. When he went to hell, he made a public spectacle of demons. He defeated the devil and all of his cohort of demons, that he did it for you. And then he rose with you. The Bible says, when he died, we died with him. When he was buried, we were buried. And when he rose, we rose in him. So you can be born again because Jesus paid the price. And now you can accept that price. You see, so the first part is you accept the life of God. Many people think that born again means you give your life to Christ. That's the second part of it. That is living a righteous life. That is working out your salvation. The real first part of being born again means you receive the life of Christ. So when you say, Lord Jesus, for example, if you're going to get born again, you just pray. It's a matter of prayer. You say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart that you came, that you lived to demonstrate the superior life of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you were buried and you paid the price for all of my sins that I may be justified and that you rose again in righteousness for me. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. You see, when you say that prayer, that is what it takes for you to be born again. All of what it takes to be born again is that you believe that Jesus did it for you and you confess. Believe and confess. Believe and confess. Believe and confess. So I'm repeating that so you understand that that is all it takes 
to be born again. You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. When you confess it by faith, what has happened in that short moment of prayer is that because the word was preached to you, like I'm doing right now, you're receiving the semen, you're receiving the seed of the word. And when you're receiving the seed of the word, the Holy Spirit is convicting you of the question, am I really born again? Maybe you're listening to this right now and you're wondering, am I really born again? If Jesus returned today, will I be one of his? Will he choose me as one of his? Will he proclaim, this is my son? When the father looks from heaven, does he proclaim me as his son? These are the questions that come to your heart. At that moment, you know the Holy Spirit is convicting you. Sometimes when you're receiving the word of God, you start to remember all of the wrong things you did. And that's why we sometimes tell people, after you've received that life, you have been justified. First of all, you receive his life. And then your response is, you surrender your living. Did you get the expression? I didn't say you surrender your life. Because once you receive his life, you see, you have a new life. You have become a new creature that never existed before. What happens in that process is that you receive a new spirit. Now, I've taught many of you before that man is indeed a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. Your body is just your house. You live in a body. You are a spirit. So what happens is you receive a new spirit. No doubt David said, put a new and right spirit within me. David prayed some very interesting prayers in the Old Testament. He said, put a new and right spirit within me. So what happens is when you confess the Lordship of Jesus and say, I receive eternal life, what happens is you have received the life of God in you. You have a new spirit. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you are a new creature. You have received the Zoe life. That is the life of God, the essence of divinity. Does that make sense to you? You're born again in that process. Now, your response to being born again is that you surrender your living to the Lord. Now that you're born again, your response is you surrender your living. How do you surrender your living? The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, Do not be conformed to the standards of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, do not conform to the standards of this world anymore. Why is he saying that to you? Because you have received a new life. You have a new spirit. But now your soul is being renewed. So when you get born again in that very moment, your spirit is as good as new. But your soul is still old. Your soul still remembers the wrong things you did. Your soul is your mind, your will your emotions, your center of consciousness, your center of identity. So your soul still has the identity of a sinner. So what do you do? You surrender your living. It means you surrender your soul to the word of God that you may learn from the word to live the life of Christ. Now you have received new life. You have received the life of Christ. Therefore, you learn to surrender your living. You learn how to live out the life of Christ, how to work out your salvation. And then the effect is that you begin to experience that salvation on your body. This morning, if you're listening to this and you're not born again, I want to tell you it's a very simple process. Do you believe that Jesus came? Do you believe that he lived? Do you believe that he died? Do you believe that he was buried and that he rose again? Do you believe that all of that which he did, he did for you? This morning, I present to you a new life. I present to you a better way. There is a better life. There's a higher standard. When you were born naturally, you were born a sinner. You were born a sinner because Adam sinned. But if you believe in Jesus as your Lord, you are born again as a righteous man, as a saint. The Bible now calls us saints. You don't become a saint when you die. You become a saint when you're born again. You're no longer a sinner saved by grace. When you're born again, you are righteous by grace. Saying that you're a sinner saved by grace is, you know, almost tautology or, or wrong. Because if you're saved by grace, now you're righteous. So you're righteous by grace. Do you get what I'm saying? So what do you do? Do you believe all of that? Do you believe that Jesus can free you of your sin? Do you believe that he can free you of all the addictions and all the struggles? Do you believe that you can receive new life? That you can be saved and receive eternal life? You can be saved from eternal destruction because Jesus is coming again. 
If you believe that, then I invite you to pray with me and just say, Dear Father, I recognize today that I have sinned and that I have not lived the life that you prepared for me. I have lived a substandard life. I have lived in sin and I have lived as a sinner. This morning I have heard your word and I believe in you, Jesus. I believe that you came. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried and that you rose. And ultimately, I believe that you did it all for me. This morning, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And therefore, Lord, I receive new life. I believe in the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and my Savior. I confess the Lordship of Jesus. From today on, Jesus is the Lord of my life. He's the centerpiece of my living and my existence. I confess his lordship over all that I am and all that I do. I receive eternal life. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you made that prayer, let us know. Send us an email. Let us know in the comment section that you're born again. All right? And now, don't just listen to the prayer. If you listen to the prayer and you're not born again, go back and actually pray the prayer out loud. Because the Bible said you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. Now, if you listen to this and you're born again, I want to give you a commission this morning. Send this teaching to as many people as possible. Let them know that Jesus has brought a better life and that they can be saved. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That now that you're born again, that you will surrender your living to the Lord. You will surrender your life to the Lord. You have known the Lord as your Savior. You have received new life and you're born again. But I want to show you a better way that you know him as Lord. And as Lord, you surrender your life to him. You surrender your living to him. You surrender your existence to him. You no longer live by yourself. You live for him. I pray that you will be conscious of this. And not only will you become born again, but you will cause others to become born again too by sharing this message with them or by telling them, the message of our Lord Jesus Christ, the message of the gospel. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. It was beautiful having you on today's meditation. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. God bless you. Goodbye.